publicly. I'd given it to him privately, but I gave it to him publicly. Gave my life to Christ publicly when I was about nine years old. I'd gone through a series of Voice of Prophecy lessons that I, that I wanted to do. I'd send off the lessons, they'd send me some more and so forth. I got into academy, I'd, I'd been baptized, I got into academy and uh, I got interested in that book, Desire of Ages. Mm -hmm. On Sabbath afternoons, I'd read that book and in time, I came across the story of Jesus being in the Garden of Gethsemane and, and, and the cross. Mm -hmm. And I, I learned how, how, how Jesus was encouraged in Gethsemane by the angel as he looked into the future and saw the people who would appreciate what he was doing. And I, I felt to myself, I hope, I hope Jesus saw me responding to him mm. and that encouraged him and then I, I in my heart I saw him die on the cross I read read the story there and I realized how much Jesus had paid for me amen to be saved uh, I think uh, I think Jesse probably one of the things that helped helped me as a teenager to to stay with Jesus was that and uh, par parents listen to this uh, think of it as advice about when you're raising your own kids and I'm going to listen also since I would like to have kids someday yeah my dad my dad would uh, on Friday nights he'd be getting ready to preach the next day and um, I'd come home from academy from vespers and uh, it was everybody else had gone to bed this happened many friday nights actually and um, i would just sit down with my dad interrupt what he was doing getting ready for the next day and and i would probe him with all kinds of different sometimes unanswerable questions <laughs> and um, you know he helped me think several things through he took time with me there to, to uh, just let me ask the questions. That's wonderful. And it was cool uh, how much I learned uh, just doing that from him. And it really, it really helped me to realize that there wasn't anything more important in life than Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Daniel. <laughs> Gail Lasher, please join me on stage. And uh, God is good. And all the time, that is very, very true. Gail. Hi. Hey. <laughs> oh, you want a hug? Yeah. Did I give Daniel a hug? No. Daniel, no. what's wrong with you? Okay, I'll take care. <laughs> give, I, want, I want Daniel's hug. Okay, this is Daniel's hug. <laughs> Daniel, I'll give it to you later. <laughs> oh, he's coming. Come on, come on, come on. Come and get it. Come and get it. Go ahead. Okay, but here's I'm out of the way. Okay, I, 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 I took it for you. Yeah. <laughs> but, but I want you to have the real one. Oh, this is a real thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Older brother. Hug fest. Yeah. Do you want to be part of this family? Hug fest. Gail? Yes. Can you please tell us about your, your life? Uh, my life was, I appreciate, for those of you who were here earlier this morning, I appreciate the story that you told. I was being given fruit from God in my early years. And then um, this other one came along and had some fruit and offered it to me, and I took it. And so the beginning of my life, starting at about 17, began 23 years of uh, alcoholism. Alcoholism. And uh, through the experience in that, um, a lot of really ugly stuff that I experienced until I had um, kind of reached the bottom of what my life was. It was pretty stinky. It's pretty dirty. Pretty dirty. It's pretty deep. How did you meet Jesus? Well, this is a really cool thing because, see, Jesus had always been reaching out his fruit to me 
you know, through all kinds of different ways. And, and the deal was I couldn't reach it. First, I didn't notice it. And then, you know, I wasn't sure that I really wanted it. And then I did, but I couldn't reach it. And the most amazing thing about Jesus is that he used people like you uh, who kept bringing it to me. And, and I was in such a deep, dark, dark place. It was, I, it was like I just I couldn't reach it. And so he took me through some um, difficult experiences. My stepdad died, just blew my world apart. And in that experience, my mom, who's always loved me, um, asked me an interesting question the night that we buried him, and that was, um, Gail, are you going to heaven? And I said, yeah, of course I am. What a ridiculous question. And then the question kept coming back to me, and as this fruit was being offered to me from God and who he is, his fruit of love, um, I realized that not only was I not taking it and I couldn't reach it, but that um, through people like you, you kept coming closer and closer to me. And I was just, I was just loved. I was just flat loved into the arms and this embrace of Jesus and who he is in just a, a, really a most powerful and amazing way. And I, I've been reading a book. It's called Absolute Surrender. I highly recommend it. It's free online. That in this, when I took the fruit and determined that I would allow God to feed me, but I didn't know how that would happen, that I kept having to reach, that I would have to go chase after it. That's what I thought. Mm. And I found that he just kept bringing it to me. And in this, in this surrender, it's that, it's that God expects me to just receive the fruit from him. But I don't know how to do that. And so he accomplishes it by, abs by, by actually just bringing it and putting it into my hand and my heart. Mm. And because he does that, he accepts whatever I give as I reach to take that. And then a, a scripture was given to me. It's Philippians 1.6. And it says, he who has begun a good work in you, the one who has begun to reach you with this fruit, will complete the work. He will fill you up all the way through. You will never be hungry until the day that Jesus comes. And I believe that's a day soon. And I'm so looking forward to that. <laughs> because <laughs> when you showed that picture of Jesus and the baby, and he's kissing me, wow. Wouldn't that just feel good? I want to be a baby again and just be in those arms. Yes. I can't wait. I just can't wait. And um, the privilege that he gives now to know that hug, mm. the greatest hug ever, to know it and have it, what he does is what we just did here. He puts our arms out to somebody else. Mm -hmm. And I have had... Um, Wow, every week, and this week is one, where I was with uh, a young mom with two little boys who doesn't have anybody to hug her. Mm. Nobody. She doesn't know that. All the touching she's had in her life has been icky. Mm -hmm. so how do you know to even receive that if all the hugs you've had were not good? Yeah. To be able to come near to her and to touch her and to, to watch. I watched Jesus not only touch her, I watched her, friends, fall into his arms Amen. and be kissed. Mm. It's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. God is good. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man, all the time. Yeah. Gail, um, your life, your minute-by-minute -minute stress level as an alcoholic is different than it is right now. Different kind of stress. Yes. Can you talk about that difference for a moment? Well, the difference as an alcoholic is um, if I used words to describe uh, my life, in that state, I was angry, I was sad, I was confused, I was really lost. I was without hope, I was, I became helpless, I had nothing to offer in a, a family that I had, I uh, found myself getting divorced, I had two little children of my own, I couldn't, I didn't know how to hold them and love them, and the stress of that was, I had a four-year-old, I'm putting her to bed one night, and she looked at me right square in the eyes and said, Mommy, are you going to die? Mm. 
wow, what do you 